Tonight, ABC News getting the first up close look at the twisted remains of the fallen Francis Scott Key Bridge. That bridge in Baltimore still lying across the cargo ship that took it down. New data from the black boxes detail the chilling moments leading up to the catastrophic collision. And we talked to an expert about the massive undertaking of the cleanup operation. And you have one chance to give a first impression. If you lose that opportunity, it ruins you forever. They have solidified their place in a glamorous market. Tonight, we follow the women of New York's Diamond District. Good evening, everyone. I'm Phil Lipoff in tonight for Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We are following those stories and much more, including the convicted crypto scammer sentenced to 25 years in prison, Sam Bankman Freed, who was found guilty of masterminding a billion, multi billion dollar fraud scheme, learned his fate, what his victims and the judge had to say about the former FTX CEO. Plus, heart-stopping dash cam footage shows the moment a cement truck veered into oncoming traffic, hitting a school bus, and as you see, causing it to flip. And it is countdown to Cowboy Carter on the eve of Beyonce's new country album, a look at how the superstar is once again transforming the music industry. But we begin with the stunning new images on board the cargo ship that brought down Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. This video released by the NTSB shows inspectors probing the damage, the twisted metal of the bridge draped across the bow of the ship. Our team was out on the water with the Army Corps of Engineers who were leading the recovery operation. And earlier this evening, Maryland Governor Wes Moore spoke about their priorities. We need to continue to focus on recovery because it is our obligation to bring a sense of closure to these families. Cranes are on the way to clear the debris and tow that ship away, and then to recover the bodies of the four missing construction workers trapped underneath all of that. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze on the scene for us tonight. Tonight, a first look inside the cargo ship that crashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. NTSB investigators combing through the catastrophic damage, collecting evidence, surveying the mangled wreckage and twisted steel encasing the bow of the ship, and examining the hazardous materials on board. A massive operation is now underway to clear the wreckage. The U.S. Navy sending three giant cranes to the scene, officials hoping to refloat the cargo ship Dolly to begin clearing this vital East Coast port. We're only able to get this close right now because we're with the Army Corps of Engineers. The rest of this water is completely blocked to any other commercial vessels. We traveled by boat, getting our first up-close look at the mangled metal and debris. This goes 50 feet down into the water. That needs to get cleared before anything can pass in and out. 1,000 Army Corps of Engineer personnel now supporting the recovery effort. We have to get that section of bridge that is resting on the front of that vessel off of the vessel. General Scott Spellman telling me that piece of steel alone weighs nearly 9 million pounds and will need to be cut into sections before it's lifted off piece by piece with a crane. This is one of the largest ports in the United States of America and it has to get reopened quickly. Investigators pouring over the ship's voyage data recorder, obtaining preliminary information consistent with the power outage and outlining a timeline of the five minutes before the disaster. The ship's lights going dark at 1.24 a.m. Tuesday, alarms ringing out. Within minutes, the pilots calling for tugboats, issuing a mayday, notifying authorities the ship lost power and was heading toward the bridge. First responders stopping traffic on the bridge. Shortly after 1.29 a.m., that collision and collapse heard on the data recorder. Only two of the eight construction workers who were on the bridge survived. Authorities on Wednesday recovered the bodies of two of them, 26-year-old Dorleon Castillo and 35-year-old Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes, both found inside a submerged pickup truck. Four more workers presumed dead, believed to be trapped in the underwater wreckage, including Miguel Luna and Maynor Suazo Sandoval. Sandoval's brother Carlos telling ABC News Maynor had an unbeatable spirit filled with happiness. The Baltimore Orioles today taking time to recognize the victims before their home opener. Let us join together in a moment of silence for those who lost their lives. And later in the game, honoring three first responders who stopped traffic on the bridge, saving lives. All of them heroes. Elizabeth is on the scene for us now. Elizabeth, we just heard from Maryland's governor and some other officials. What are they telling us tonight? 
Well, Phil, we know that this recovery effort is going on 24 seven and officials are making clear that it is top priority to get this port reopened. Maryland Governor Westmore also praised the first responders who are on the scene at the collision. Had that traffic not been stopped in the darkness, cars would have continued to come. So the life-saving work that they did cannot be overstated. So much heartbreak and loss for the victims in this, but also emphasis from the governor and many officials here that it could have been so much worse. Phil. Absolutely. Elizabeth Schulze from Baltimore. Elizabeth, thank you. Now let's bring in Professor Natalie Simpson. She teaches operations management and strategy at the University at Buffalo School of Management. She's an expert in emergency response and disaster response. Professor Simpson, thanks so much for taking the time. Do appreciate it. Let's start by talking through this incredibly complicated operation. First, it's sadly believed that the bodies of some of the victims are trapped in this debris. So how is that likely to impact the order of operation here? Well, the order of operations Right now, the priority is recovery. Uh, now, one of the things, though, that's happening is, is that we're beginning an early start onto salvage because in order to recover the souls that we have lost, uh, it looks like we are gonna have to move some of that trust work. So you do see activity uh, in basically what would um, perhaps be two different stages going on right now. This looks like such an incredibly complicated operation. You certainly know better than most, but there are things that complicate it even further. We know that some of the containers on the ship contain hazardous materials. How does that complicate the job of moving the cargo from the ship? It is definitely a concern. I don't want to make light of that. But actually, that is only one piece of the puzzle as far as the complexity of uh, what everybody's confronted with right now, in that there were, I think it was 56 containers had corrosive or flammable materials. So one of the biggest dangers isn't so much the hazardous materials themselves, but just the stability of that ship and the safety of anybody that's working around it. So you know that that's what they're working on right now to find a safe solution, because one thing we definitely don't want to do at this point is we don't want to make anything worse. We've already lost six people. Ultimately, the damaged ship and the debris from the bridge needs to be cleared from that river. That seems like, you know, we're watching, you know, pictures of the bridge uh, come down right now. There's a tremendous amount of debris. What's likely to be involved in that stage of clearing? You know, uh, there are many, many things in the meantime that can go wrong so that you can know that behind the scenes people are working very hard to make sure they don't go wrong. Like, for instance, I, I'm more fearful of a simple fire breaking out mm. than like specific hazardous materials uh, that were aboard that ship because that would be a, a terrible tragedy. At any rate, they need to refloat that ship. They'll probably take it back to shore to unload it. At that point, the scene is not become safe, but it is less dangerous. And then I think that we'll see these floating platforms. They'll start to resurface big parts of the wreckage in order to clear the channel. Yeah, and I think most importantly, at the beginning of the conversation, you point out that there are still victims of this horrific tragedy down there, and, and we need to bring them back to their families. Professor Natalie yeah. Simpson, thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Oh, certainly. Now to our other big story tonight. The sentencing of the man behind one of the largest financial schemes in U.S. history, former cryptocurrency billionaire Sam Bankman Freed, sentenced to 25 years in federal prison in order to pay $11 billion to compensate his victims. The 32 year old was once the poster boy for the currency of the future, but is now facing the consequences of old fashioned crime. Bankman Freed was convicted in November of diverting billions of dollars of his customers' money to cover his losses in a separate and risky investment scheme. His lawyers argued for leniency, portraying him as a, quote, an awkward math nerd. But the judge said he hadn't heard a word of remorse from Bankman Freed and said that 25 years would disable him from committing another fraud for a long time. We are standing by for legal analysis, but ABC's senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky leads us off from the courthouse tonight. Just two years ago, FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed mingled with the rich and powerful, his company's name on sports arenas, ads in the Super Bowl. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. But tonight, the one-time king of crypto is off to federal prison for 25 years. 
Before he was sentenced today, Bankman Freed apologized for his $11 billion fraud. I made a series of bad decisions, he said. It haunts me every day. But the judge not buying it, noting there was never a word of remorse for the commission of terrible crimes. You just need FTX. With celebrity endorsements and Bankman Freed's guarantees money would be safe, FTX became the premier crypto exchange. It collapsed in late 2022 after Bankman Freed used billions in FTX customer funds without permission to keep his privately controlled hedge fund, Alameda Research, afloat. At trial, prosecutors playing this ABC News interview. So you do know and you did know that FTX deposits were being funneled to Alameda. So I was vaguely aware that that was how some wires were being sent in the first place. Um, Didn't that set off alarm bells in your head? So there are a lot of people who are involved in that process. And look, I really deeply wish that I had taken, like, a lot more responsibility for understanding what the details were of what was going on there. In court today, one victim told the judge he lost money I wanted to spend on a family home. The judge saying he received more than 200 letters, a man with two young children writing, he lost everything. It was my life savings, and now I am left with nothing. The judge said he wanted Bankman Freed in prison long enough so he cannot commit another fraud. Otherwise, there is a risk that this man will be in a position to do something very bad in the future. And it is not a trivial risk. Aaron joins me now. And Aaron, we know that 25-year prison sentence is not the only punishment Bankman Freed faces. It's not, Phil. The judge has also ordered Bankman Freed to forfeit $11 billion. He does not have that, but prosecutors can use assets they've already seized from Bankman Freed to compensate some of the victims. Although, Phil, we've heard from a lot of those FTX customers, they're losing hope they'll ever be made whole. Phil? Yeah. All right. Aaron Katursky from New York City tonight. Aaron, thank you. Let's talk a little bit more about this. ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley joins me now. Kim, what did you make of this sentence and also what the judge said when he handed it down? The sentence seems commensurate with the level of fraud here. Um, people call it one of the biggest fraud scandals in, in history. It, a lot of people were hurt, $8 billion in losses for individuals. I mean, look, he, he uh, the scheme was people made these investments in crypto, and he took that money and spent it on other things. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the defense was, I mean, you know, he's, he's autistic. He maybe wasn't really on top of everything. The judge didn't buy any of that in part because uh, the judge found or determined that he committed perjury, that he may have done some witness tampering prior to to um, the trial and that he was evasive on the stand. So that uh, idea that he should, he was not a risk to the public in going out and hobnobbing, maybe again with celebrities and billionaires, um, it, I think the judge didn't buy that and thought he would, the public would be safer with him uh, in prison for now 25 years, although he could get out earlier under uh, the federal rules. We're talking about roughly $10 billion. What about the efforts to claw back all that money? Uh, you know, listen, this is widespread. There are a lot of lawyers in Washington and across the country that are working on this because he took some of the money, allegedly, and made political donations to both Democrats and Republicans. And so there's this, you know, real effort sort of going all over, trying to identify the, 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 the trail of money and pull it back. And as you indicate, to pay back some of the victims, his lawyers in their filing were on sentencing said that the victims would be made whole. The judge did not believe that. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't really sort of make common sense. But at a minimum, they, they lost the ability to make additional money in the crypto industry where other people are making money. But I should say, Phil, too, I think this sentence is important because the crypto industry in general is not very well regulated. So something like this, this high profile sentence sends a message to other people in that industry that, listen, we, we better really color between the lines and be extra careful because we don't want to end up in the same uh, boat that that Sam Bankman Freed now is going to be in for a big part of his adult life. Hey, Kim, I want to get your thoughts on this. Some are pointing to a disparity in sentencing lengths for white collar crimes like this versus substance abuse crimes. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this warrants a larger conversation about sentencing lengths? 
Absolutely, Phil. I mean, it, it, there's something sort of arbitrary about these sentences. We talk about them, we hear about them. There are some guidelines, but it's really subjective. So you could, you know, do, do do three petty crimes in certain parts of the country and, you know, three strikes you're out and spend many this amount of time in prison. You could you could engage in uh, uh, activity to, to feed an addiction or, or really to feed your family uh, with less problems kind of for the broader public. White collar crimes, these financial crimes that happen with the highly wealthy don't tend to carry the kinds of sentences um, that many, many people, particularly people of color, are serving across the country. Uh, and so maybe this could start a larger conversation around the sensibility. Are we doing this for punitive damage reasons? Are we doing this for deterrence? Or do we not even know? Uh, so I think that part of it, um, hopefully this, this could trigger some of those conversations. All right. Kim Willie, thanks for the analysis as always. Thank you. Now to the storms on both coasts tonight. Heavy rain here in the east, flood watches from North Carolina to Maine, and a washout for some Major League Baseball fans on this opening day. Games in Philly and New York postponed. Meantime, back-to-back -back storms taking aim at the west as Easter approaches. So let's get right to ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. Hey, Rob, what does it look like for this holiday weekend? Well, some folks will see some improvement here in the east. As you mentioned, it's getting very active in the west with those two storms here. Still have some leftover rain with flood watches posted for parts of eastern New England tonight and the mid-Atlantic. That ribbon of rain that's been with the east all day long, creating that mass, has been slow to push offshore. It'll eventually do so. We'll see things end from west to east tonight. But rain will probably be hanging around the Cape, parts of Maine and Boston early in the morning. But you will get your games in at City Field and Citizens Bank uh, Stadium. There you go. Uh, Braves at the Phillies tomorrow after afternoon, 3 o'clock, should be sunny, breezy, uh, but drier, and uh, we're looking for a drying uh, trend for uh, City Field as they host the Brewers. In the west, storm number one coming into the Pacific Northwest tonight. Very heavy rain, I-5 down through Portland and into San Francisco. Tomorrow's a second system swings into Central California and heavy snow in the Sierra. Heavy rain across parts of Southern California and a pretty high risk for seeing flooding from Santa Barbara to San Diego and a risk for mudslides, especially around the hills in Los Angeles through Sunday. This system as well is going to be slow to move out. Phil? Busy few days weather-wise. All right, Rob, thanks. Now to the race for the White House with four U.S. presidents here in New York. President Biden holding a, a $25 million fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall with some high-profile support from former presidents, former President Obama, hitching a ride to New York on Air Force One with President Biden. Former President Clinton also attending these first pictures here of the three Democratic presidents behind the scenes. Former President Trump, though, also nearby at the wake of an NYPD officer killed in the line of duty. Trump's Manhattan criminal trial starting in less than three weeks. ABC's chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce here in New York. Tonight, President Biden calling in the heavy hitters to give his campaign a jolt. Biden and former President Barack Obama touching down today in New York City. Teaming up tonight with former President Bill Clinton for what the campaign is touting as a record-shattering fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall. The Biden campaign billing the star-studded night as a massive show of force. A conversation with three presidents and musical guests including Lizzo and Queen Latifah. The event expected to rake in an historic $25 million, more money than rival Donald Trump raised all last month. Tickets for the sold-out fundraiser run from $225 to half a million dollars. Select high-dollar donors can get their photo taken with all three presidents by famed photographer Annie Leibovitz. Outside the event in New York, pro-Palestinian protesters demanding a ceasefire. Biden and Trump are running neck and neck in national polls, with the race now tightening in key battleground states. Trump today making his own visit to New York, invited by the family to the wake of slain NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, a young father gunned down during a routine traffic stop. It comes as Trump is eager to put crime front and center in this election. We have to stop. We have to get back to law and order. We have to do a lot of things differently because this is not working. This is happening too often. 
Now, the Trump campaign is claiming they will have their own record-shattering fundraiser next week. They say that will bring in about $33 million, but the former president has already had to spend at least $60 million in political contributions to pay his legal fees. The bottom line here, Phil, the Biden campaign so far has far outpaced the Trump campaign in fundraising as the former president continues to be weighed down by his legal woes. Phil? All right, Mary Bruce, thank you from New York tonight. Meantime, Donald Trump is seeking to dismiss Georgia's election interference case against him. His lawyers in the Fulton County courtroom arguing the former president's comments questioning the results of the 2020 election were, quote, the height of political speech protected by the First Amendment. The judge has yet to make any rulings. Now to the chilling new details of a stabbing spree in Rockford, Illinois. Police say 22-year-old Christian Soto went on a deadly 20-minute knife rampage, killing four people, including a 15-year-old girl. Her mother says she died protecting her sister and a friend. They had been watching a movie when the attacker broke in. Investigators say Soto told them he was doing drugs, that they were allegedly laced with something before launching into his attack. Seven others were injured. One person was injured and 226 passengers were evacuated from a Frontier Airlines flight after a strong odor was detected. The plane was preparing to depart from Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Video taken by passengers showing the chaotic scenes as people were asked to evacuate using sliders after boarding flight 1759 to Orlando. Frontier says there was no visible smoke or fire. The company is, of course, investigating the cause. Still much more to get to here on Prime tonight. Newly released video of a deadly school bus crash in Texas. But next, they say diamonds are a girl's best friend. And that certainly is the case for these ladies in the Diamond District. When you're a woman and you show them that you're doing deals and that you're better than them and you know how to manage your client, they respect you. Whenever news breaks, we are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines from southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today? Escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about. The migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this is our combat operations center. We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not a carry in it. How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Beyonce's conquering country. My family loves Beyonce. Cowboy Carter comes into the world at a very complex time. People are saying this song is too good to resist. Just because you sing hip hop music with a country accent does not make it country music. The stay in your lane, the, well, that's not real country. It takes somebody who is at superstar status to do something that shakes it all up. It's Beyonce country. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu.
Welcome back. You've heard the saying diamonds are a girl's best friend, but there's a group of powerful women in New York proving that diamonds are their dynasty. In tonight's Prime Focus, we're going to take you to the city's diamond district to see just how these women are dominating the game and changing the industry. My name is Carrie Levine. Everybody calls me the godmother of diamonds. My other half, good morning. Hello, welcome. A friend of mine sent me a picture of myself at a wedding about 20 years ago. And I was holding a cognac in one hand and smoking a cigar in the other hand. And when I looked at it, I said to myself, that's it, you're the godmother of diamonds. I am in the jewelry business all my life, jewelry and watches. I need a pair of five carat or six carat diamond studs to show a client today. Somewhere in the 25 to $35,000 range. The Diamond District, it's a hustle. It is 100% a hustle. The only thing that matters is your reputation. I'm Carrie, a pleasure to meet you. What's your name? You have one chance to give a first impression. If you lose that opportunity, it ruins you forever. There's a lot of crazy down here. I've been here for 43 years, I've seen it all. I once got caught in a shootout on 6th Avenue. Back in the 80s, I was coming out of the bank making a deposit and some guy robbed something and I got caught in between two guys and had to duck into a building. So that was kind of like a little crazy and scary. The Diamond District was really a Jewish area built by immigrants who came over from the Holocaust and overseas in Europe because we always had to pick up and run. Diamonds and jewelry were easy to take and barter with and do things. We're gonna buy some diamonds today. It's all about bartering. Peter, let's talk about the lot. What, what kind of a deal we can make on this? 120. 120,000? Yes. But if I'm gonna buy this whole lot, I wanna buy it a little bit better. How much are you looking for? I see $104,000. $400. So what I can do is this much, 108000 How close can you get to my 104000 I'll be losing money. Can we mazal out at 105000 Everything was always done on a handshake in our business. It was like you shook your hand, you said mazal, meant the deal is done. Okay, mazal. $105,000. Yes. Yes? Yes. $105,000 of the most gorgeous emerald cut diamonds here. I am at the height of my career when I should be winding down and retiring, but I can't. It stimulates me, it, it makes me thrive. I just love doing a deal here and there with people. I appreciate you. Bring me the certificates and bring me the invoice. I used to go up against all the guys in the industry as a young kid. It was very male dominated. But today, there's a lot of women coming into the industry. I love Jules. She's my neighbor. Good morning, America! Good morning. We do a few deals together. When I have people come in with vintage watches, I give those watches to Jules. She's a breath of fresh air. It was a pleasure to deal with you. Okay. What do you do? I'm selling dreams. This is what I do in life. Because everybody's dreaming about a watch. Oh my god, you beautiful! This is the watch? Most of the watches that I sell, it's vintage because it has a history and it's beautiful. The watch has three papers and the year of the watch is... Uh, oh my god, 1995. And the dial is completely original, it's not correct. I checked the dial already. I'm going to send her picture because she has to see the, the picture first. Check with the husband. Apparently the husband has the money. <laughs> And then she will let me know. But she's very interested. There is no competition. For me, there's none. I came from nowhere. And I'm a woman, and I put my name on it. Most of the dealers, they are like next to my place. So I bought this watch in Vegas show 
and he has a customer looking for this watch. I pay 9,000 and I'm gonna try to sell it for 10,5. I mean, I wanna get to 10, but I'm gonna tell him 10,5 because I know that he's gonna negotiate with me on this one. He's here, come this way. I'm a hard negotiator. Even I'm negotiating on my rent, I'm negotiating when I'm on the street, I'm negotiating everywhere. Show me. Yeah. How much? This one, I'm asking 10.5. This is a 40 millimeter, correct? Yeah. 9,500. No. 10. You want to flip? We flip a coin? I, I flip with you, I lost. I don't have luck with you. Let's meet in the middle. 5 or 10. We, he is flipping. He's flipping. You call in the air. Go. Heads! Tails. Tails. It's okay, you win. But I always win, you know that. Even life, if you win. Life, you always win. I like the hustle. I like the feeling of selling the watch. It gives me a, a feeling of accomplishment. It's like a drug, you know? Now I sold him the watch and I knew that he's going to negotiate with me. I didn't make much. I made $500 on the flip. But don't worry. Another deal, I'm gonna catch him. And being a woman in the watch industry, it's magical. When you're a woman and you show them that you're doing deals and that you be, you're better than them and you know how to manage your client, they respect you. And having the respect on men that they're like 20 years in the block, it's the best thing ever. Your ego goes up, you know. We sold around 10 watches now. Mm -hmm. I think how much we made in total? $6,000. Yeah, $6,000 or $7,000 in five hours. And maybe like $100,000 in sales? One day at the office, the market was very slow. And I say to myself, uh, you know what? Why don't I start a TikTok account? I'm gonna buy this one for 3,000 and I'm gonna buy this one for 11.50. And we can do even trade because it's your birthday. What about that? That's great. Thank you. Mazal. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> In two months, I make uh, 100K followers just from TikTok. And then I create my YouTube channel that I'm very proud of. Rich, rich, bling, bling. I own it. Fast money, get paid. You know it. I started playing around with Instagram and TikTok. Hey guys, it's Carrie here, the godmother of diamonds. And I definitely want to share a very special moment with you. I took off unexpectedly. It, I, in a million years, I never thought it would go where, where it went. Bling, bling, I own it. I own it. Yeah, you know I own it. Diamonds on my neck. The young kids today come to me like I'm their mother. Help me, talk to me. You know this so well. You're so, you're the OG. Original gangster. <laughs> or the goat. They call you the goat, the greatest of all time. I'm telling you, the first thing you do is you go work for somebody and you learn the industry. Because if you take your money and you jump into this, you know what you're doing, you're gonna lose your money. I've made a lot of money, I've lost a lot of money. Money is not what rules me anymore. What really makes me go is helping somebody learn. I'm giving you the best advice. You can tell Kirby you spoke to me. They'll take me out in a wooden box on 47th Street because I don't look at it going to work as a job. I love getting up every day and going to work. Well, look at the time. I hustle and grind. Yeah, I would love to have more time. More time to answer people, more time to be here for people. How are you? I would like to inspire more women in the business, to be honest. And just to, to be the, the first successful watch dealer woman in 47th Street or in the world. Well, I think for them, anything is really possible. There is still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, countdown to Beyonce's Cowboy Carter album. But next, Sam Bankman Freed was sentenced today. How much time did he get and how much money did he steal? We'll tell you by the numbers. People really want to know what it feels like to be a photographer. Right shoulder down, there we go. It's this yin-yang of danger. 
and this incredible raw beauty. That's his first breath. That's so cool. All right, this is it. These moments that you immortalize makes a lot of difference. There's a masterpiece everywhere. Ah! <laughs> This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. The strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in a crowd. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star, Erica Jane, celebrity attorney, Tom Girardi. This story was a nuclear explosion. Today, several victims will get a chance to finally meet Erica Girardi. I'm at sort of a loss for what to say. Did you see the documentary? Yeah. The Housewife and the Hustler? I did. I wanted Erica to say, I'm sorry, face to face. Erica, why did it take you so long? The Housewife and the Hustler 2. Only on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Reporting from Seoul, South Korea, I'm Britt Clennett. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. FTX CEO and founder Sam Bankman Freed is now facing 25 years in prison for his actions that led to the company's downfall. But all may not be lost for FTX customers and creditors. Bankruptcy lawyers appointed to oversee the company report they expect to fully repay everyone with legitimate claims. Here's a look at that by the numbers. Prosecutors say Sam Bankman Freed stole at least $10 billion from the company to buy luxury real estate, make risky investments, and make large charitable donations and political contributions. So far, the company's new CEO has clawed back more than $7 billion in cash, luxury property, cryptocurrency, and missing assets. And that doesn't include things like $26 million in gifts and property to Bankman Freed's parents, or the $700 million given to the investment firm K5 Global for investments in things like SpaceX. Some of those investments have seen a significant rise in value. Separately, the company's $500 million investment in AI company Anthropic is now estimated to be worth about $1.4 billion. And then there's FTX's Bitcoin stash. It's now valued at more than $1 billion, and that is up from $560 million just back in September. 
If customers are eventually made whole, some say that could play a big role in Bankman Freed's likely appeal following today's sentencing. There is much more to get to here on Prime. A Florida man coming across a gator in a sewer. Not a small one either. And Oscar nominee Carrie Condon joins us to discuss In the Land of Saints and Sinners. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. And the magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaires sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. America every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. A massive gator found in a sewer. Tuberculosis cases hit a 10-year high, and it's opening day for the MLB. Those stories and more in tonight's rundown. Dash cam footage shows the harrowing moments a cement truck veered into oncoming traffic and struck a school bus head-on last week. The bus was carrying more than 40 children when it rolled over on a rural highway outside Austin, Texas. Officials say one student died and another driver was killed in the incident. Multiple students were transported to nearby hospitals via helicopter and ambulance. Authorities say the crash remains under investigation. A man in Florida was mowing his lawn when he came across a gator looking at him through a sewer grate at the edge of his property. The eight-foot reptile was hauled out of the subterranean hideaway by local wildlife control. The state's Wildlife Commission says alligators can actually adapt to a wide range of environments and move through different bodies of water to find food or shelter. Underground infrastructure in developed areas can also allow them to travel short distances unnoticed. 
A new CDC report shows an alarming rise in tuberculosis cases here in the U.S. 40 states reported an increase in TB cases in 2023, and in total, more than 9,600 cases were reported. That's a 16% increase from 2022. The bacterial disease affects the lungs and can be spread through the air when someone infected coughs or sneezes. In the 1800s, the disease killed one in every seven people living in the United States and Europe. Antibiotics and advanced Testing have led to cases falling in the decades since. Mayor Eric Adams announcing that New York City will begin testing gun scanner devices in the subway system. The scanners are already being used at some stadiums in the tri-state area. The mayor said there is no biometrics or personal data collected from the scans. The machines have already been in use in the Los Angeles subway system since 2018. The announcement coming on the heels of a surge in National Guard to patrol New York's vast subway system. Crime on the subway is up 4% so far this year compared to 2020 according to NYPD statistics. Over half of the fresh water coming from the Colorado River is being used for agricultural purposes, according to a study conducted by several nonprofits and universities. According to one of the authors of the study, not a single drop of water from the river has reached its natural delta on the California coast in nearly 50 years. The study also says the river has about 19% less volume than it did in 2000 and is expected to drop to 30% if global temperatures continue to rise. And play ball. Just do it faster. It's opening day and Major League Baseball is rolling out some new rule changes to pick up the game's pace, even after rule changes last season chopped 30 minutes from the average game time. This season, when runners are on base, a pitcher will have 18 seconds to make the pitch instead of 20. And each team's allotment of mound visits will be cut from five to four, with an extra one allowed in the ninth inning. Team owners translated faster games into more money. Last season saw records for advertising and ticket revenue, though attendance was still down 10% from 2007. Weight loss drugs like Ozempic and Manjaro uh, have been all the rage since the pandemic, but now a new warning for women. Using such medications, we're told, can increase the risk of getting pregnant. ABC's Rhiannon and Ali explains. A new alert for women using weight loss drugs like Ozempic. Anecdotes emerging about unexpected pregnancies after starting the medications. The FDA saying it is not aware of data that establish an increase in unintended pregnancies caused by contraceptive failure. Reasons this might be happening? The drugs can interfere with the absorption of oral medications like birth control. Another possible factor? Fertility increases when people lose weight. Losing weight, however that can be done, can make a significant difference. Meanwhile, the maker of Ozempic is facing questions about its cost. A new study suggests the $1,000 per month drug can be produced for less than $5 per month. Senator Bernie Sanders now urging Ozempic maker Novo Nordisk to lower the list price of Ozempic and the related drug Wagovi in America to no more than what they charge for this drug in Canada, which is $155 a month. The company declined to provide the production costs, but says it spent nearly $5 billion on research and development last Last year, and that the out-of-pocket costs for Ozempic depend on a patient's insurance coverage. Our thanks to Rhiannon and Allie. The new thriller in the land of saints and sinners out tomorrow inhabits a world of violent 1970s Ireland. Liam Neeson plays an assassin who desperately wants nothing more than to retire. That is until a ruthless member of the IRA played by actress Carrie Condon uses his quiet village as a hideout. Take a look. You should be minding your own business if you know what's best. You know, Fimber? Never had the pleasure, but I will. Mr. Murphy has done something. Something unforgivable. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Kill her. We've got no advantage. Joining us now is the supremely talented, multifaceted Carrie Condon. You like that? That was should I add Supremely something more? Talented. Thank Supremely you. talented is good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much for for stopping by and talking to us. Um, last year, the, the Academy Award nomination for your role in, in Banshees of Inisherin, where you played sort of a bookish sister opposite uh, Colin Farrell. Now, in 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 the land of saints and sinners, your character. Um, is downright sinister and vengeful and violent um, and loud. It's like complete opposite of that character. I'm wondering 
How difficult is it to go from one to the other and which is more fun? More fun to play. Um it's not that difficult going from one to the other because there's a gap in between. Like if I had to shoot them simultaneously, mm. that would be a bit of a nightmare. But there's kind of parts, different parts to all of us. You know, I suppose there's like sensitive parts to all of us and then anger parts to all of us. So I just sort of tap into those parts of myself and amplify them depending on the role. Um, you could find some of yourself in each of those characters? Yeah, absolutely, because I'm not a trained actress. I mean, I just learned on the job. That's how I learned to be an actress. I didn't go to drama school or acting, and I was kind of inspired by people like River Phoenix and mm. actors like that who sort of are just truthful and sort of portray like an honesty. It, this, the complexities of the IRA, the troubles, simply being Irish uh, in, in this movie, I'm wondering if sort of the fight for independence, all that surrounded everything that you were doing affected how you played the character? Do you know what? It, it didn't because a part of me didn't want to portray this person as solely a member of the IRA. This is a person who is deranged and angry and aggressive regardless of her political views. I, I sure. tried to pick play on the idea of like somebody who aligns themselves with a political cause and believes in it initially, but then sort of their own personal anger and hatred and all their own personal stuff sort of takes over. The film's backdrop is breathtaking. Oh, it was so beautiful. And I'm from Ireland and even I was like, oh my God, Donegal <laughs> is fab. It was kind of like being in a Terrence Malick movie and a Disney movie at the same time. It was just wow. so beautiful. Yeah. That's a great description. You've starred in Martin McDonough's movies, um, plays in London. Your resume is really incredible. Um, Better Call Saul, a lot of people know you from without the Irish accent, uh, the voice of Friday in various Marvel films. Any specific type of character that you haven't gotten your hands on yet that you would be interested in portraying in the future? No, loads of people ask me that. And I was saying today, I was like, I don't really sit around thinking about my career. Do whatever you know, comes. Yeah, kind of a more in the moment and whatever comes my way. And uh, But I will say, like, playing the villain was really fun. And I can see why the action movie genre, you can get kind of, you can stay in it. Because I was like, it felt like being a kid. I was like shooting Liam Neeson right, with right, a gun right. and peering around a corner. Like, I felt like I was a child. Right. So there were, it was a fun aspect to it. Um, the, the cast is all Irish. Just want to yes. follow up with this. You've got Jack Gleason, Kieran Hines, Liam Neeson. And um, I'm wondering, because you're from there, is there something about being Irish that turns out great actors who can really do nuance well? You know, if you think about, like, the history of all the literature in Ireland, there's amazing literature has come out of Ireland, so there's always, like, a history of st storytelling which Rich maybe culture. suits us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Carrie Condon, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Loved the movie. Um, in the Land of Saints and Sinners opens Friday in theatres. All right, and the countdown is on to Beyonce's new album, Cowboy Carter. The Houston native's latest project is country-inspired and has earned her a spot in history as the first black woman to top the Billboard country chart. But as Queen B herself says, this ain't a country album, it's a Beyonce album. ABC News contributor, DJ, and radio personality Megan Wright joins us now. Megan, always good to see you. This album is already available in places like Australia and New Zealand, so lucky them, uh, where it's already Friday. And the internet filled with reports about collaborations. Tell us what we know. All right, Phil, this is where things get a little tricky, okay? So, because people have, like, different opinions on how they feel about this. You have the half uh, half of the people that are like, okay, so now we know everything that's going on. And the other side of people are like, wait, I want to experience this album the, the way Beyonce wanted me to experience this album, which is having it come out, let the secrets kind of play track by track. So if you are one of those people, cover your ears right now because I'm about to break down some things, all right? So first, let's talk features. We have Miley Cyrus, we have Post Malone, and then we have a new artist, um, his name is Shibuzi. So I started following this guy, I want to say maybe about six months ago, because he had a viral country song come out. So the fact that he is now on Beyonce's album goes to show you some amazing things that he's going to uh, be doing, like probably in the near, near future. So make sure you keep your eyes and ears out for his music. Now, if we talk legends, you have Willie Nelson, you have Dolly Parton, and then you have Linda Martell. Now, if you don't know who Linda Martell is, she was one of the uh, first, not one of the, she was the first 
black artist to have a uh, charting song on the uh, country billboard in 1969 and in 1970. Now, if we move on to track listing, uh, 27 tracks, whether or not those are all songs, I highly doubt it. But if you look at the track listing, uh, you can tell that some skits and interludes may be involved because she talked about it being inspired by some kind of country radio. So I'm very excited, Phil, if you can't tell, because tomorrow <laughs> is B-Day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell at all, Megan. Uh, there's expected to be, as you <laughs> See, mentioned. my jean? My jean, no, yeah. <laughs> you're all ready. It's everything but the hat. A lot of country influence on this album. Talk about the significance of a black female artist, especially Beyonce's caliber, choosing to tackle the genre. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's a little heartbreaking to, you know, have these conversations and to know that, you know, race is such a big issue in a negative way uh, for her surrounding this album, but it kind of leads into, you know, why she did it in the first place, you know, and I feel like she said it best herself when she uh, posted the artwork for Cowboy Carter, you know, in the post, she talked about not feeling welcomed, you know, in this genre. And a lot of people, you know, think that she is going back to talking about something that happened in 2016 at the scene. AMAs when she performed and when she was performing people were saying they were going to boycott it because she was performing Phil think about what I just said right there they want to boycott the CMAs because Beyonce is performing she didn't do anything wrong she wasn't in trouble for anything just the fact that she was performing so you know a lot of things when you're an artist like I consider myself an artist I put out an album whether you do traditional art or you do stuff in the music uh, you know sphere you are inspired by what's happening in your life right so the fact that this was happening with her and then she was brave enough to take from it and put out, you know, something that I, I have a feeling is going to be a masterpiece is amazing. And it's also going to open up the doors for artists who are struggling trying to make it, you know, in this genre. Yeah, well, everything she does is spectacular. And you're right, that is ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous yeah. to boycott. I mean, just because she does it better, mm -hmm. right? Uh, definitely lots of anticipation for the album drop here, especially with Megan without the hat. Megan, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Too much hair. Uh, no, it's all perfect hair is what it is. That's our show for this hour. I'm Phil Lipoff. Stay with ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Good night. And coming up in the next hour, the latest on that deadly bridge collapse in Baltimore. And more than 200 people evacuated off a Frontier Airlines plane. We'll tell you why. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane. Celebrity attorney Tom Girardi. This story was a nuclear explosion. Today, several victims will get a chance to finally meet Erica Girardi. I'm at sort of a loss for what to say. Did you see the documentary? Yeah. The Housewife and the Hustler? I did. I wanted Erica to say, I'm sorry, face to face. Erica, why did it take you so long? The Housewife and the Hustler 2. Only on Hulu. You should see me. The strongest females fight for.
for the survival of their families. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're gonna take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Good evening, this is ABC News Live Prime. I'm Phil Lipoff in for Lindsay Davis tonight. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We do have a lot of news to get to tonight, including ABC News is getting the first up-close look at the twisted remains of the fallen Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. What we are learning about those final moments leading up to the catastrophic collision from the ship's black box. Plus, a deadly bus crash in South Africa with just one survivor. And a new documentary about the incredible rise of a young Nigerian ballet star. I sat down with the incredible Anthony Madu. But we begin with the stunning new images on board the cargo ship that brought down Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. This video released by the NTSB shows inspectors probing the damage, the twisted metal of the bridge draped across the bow of that ship. Our team was out on the water today with the Army Corps of Engineers who were leading the recovery operation. And cranes are on the way to clear out all of that heavy debris and tow the ship away. And then to the recovery of the bodies of the four missing construction workers trapped underneath. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze on the scene. Tonight, a first look inside the cargo ship that crashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. NTSB investigators combing through the catastrophic damage, collecting evidence, surveying the mangled wreckage and twisted steel encasing the bow of the ship, and examining the hazardous materials on board. A massive operation is now underway to clear the wreckage. The U.S. Navy sending three giant cranes to the scene, officials hoping to refloat the cargo ship Dolly to begin clearing this vital East Coast port. We're only able to get this close right now because we're with the Army Corps of Engineers. The rest of this water is completely blocked to any other commercial vessels. We traveled by boat, getting our first up-close look at the mangled metal and debris. This goes 50 feet down into the water. That needs to get cleared before anything can pass in and out. 1,000 Army Corps of Engineer personnel now supporting the recovery effort. We have to get that section of bridge that is resting on the front of that vessel off of the vessel. General Scott Spellman telling me that piece of steel alone weighs nearly 9 million pounds and will need to be cut into sections before it's lifted off piece by piece with a crane. This is one of the largest ports in the United States of America and it has to get reopened quickly. Investigators pouring over the ship's voyage data recorder, obtaining preliminary information consistent with the power outage and outlining a timeline of the five minutes before the disaster. The ship's lights going dark at 1.24 a.m. Tuesday. Alarms ringing out. Within minutes, the pilots calling for tugboats, issuing a mayday, notifying authorities the ship lost power and was heading toward the bridge. First responders stopping traffic on the bridge. Shortly after 1.29 a.m., that collision and collapse heard on the data recorder. Only two of the eight construction workers who were on the bridge survived. Authorities on Wednesday recovered the bodies of two of them, 26-year-old Dorleon Castillo and 35-year-old Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes, both found inside a submerged pickup truck. Four more workers presumed dead, believed to be trapped in the underwater wreckage, including Miguel Luna and Maynor Suazo Sandoval. Sandoval's brother Carlos telling ABC News Maynor had an unbeatable spirit filled with happiness. The Baltimore Orioles today taking time to recognize the victims before their home opener. Let us join together in a moment of silence for those who lost their lives. And later in the game, honoring three first responders who stopped traffic on the bridge, saving lives. All of them heroes. Elizabeth is on the scene for us now. Elizabeth, we just heard from Maryland's governor and some other officials. What are they telling us tonight? 
Well, Phil, we know that this recovery effort is going on 24 7 and officials are making clear that it is top priority to get this port reopened. Maryland Governor Westmore also praised the first responders who are on the scene at the collision. Had that traffic not been stopped in the darkness, cars would have continued to come. So the life saving work that they did cannot be overstated. So much heartbreak and loss for the victims in this, but also emphasis from the governor and many officials here that it could have been so much worse. Phil. Absolutely. Elizabeth Schulze from Baltimore. Elizabeth, thank you. Now to our other big story of the night, the sentencing of the man behind one of the largest financial crimes in U.S. history. Former cryptocurrency billionaire Sam Bankman Freed will spend 25 years in federal prison and was also ordered to pay $11 billion to compensate his victims. ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky at the courthouse. Just two years ago, FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed mingled with the rich and powerful. His company's name on sports arenas, ads in the Super Bowl. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. But tonight, the one-time king of crypto is off to federal prison for 25 years. Before he was sentenced today, Bankman Freed apologized for his $11 billion fraud. I made a series of bad decisions, he said. It haunts me every day. But the judge not buying it, noting there was never a word of remorse for the commission of terrible crimes. You just need FTX. With celebrity endorsements and Bankman Freed's guarantees money would be safe, FTX became the premier crypto exchange. It collapsed in late 2022 after Bankman Freed used billions in FTX customer funds without permission to keep his privately controlled hedge fund, Alameda Research, afloat. At trial, prosecutors playing this ABC News interview. So you do know and you did know that FTX deposits were being funneled to Alameda. So I was vaguely aware that that was how some wires were being sent in the first place. Um, Didn't that set off alarm bells in your head? So there are a lot of people who are involved in that process. And look, I really deeply wish that I had taken like a lot more responsibility for understanding what the details were of what was going on there. In court today, one victim told the judge he lost money I wanted to spend on a family home. The judge saying he received more than 200 letters, a man with two young children writing, he lost everything. It was my life savings, and now I am left with nothing. The judge said he wanted Bankman freed in prison long enough so he cannot commit another fraud. Otherwise, there is a risk that this man will be in a position to do something very bad in the future, and it is not a trivial risk. Aaron Katursky from the courthouse tonight. Aaron, thank you. Now to the race for the White House with four U.S. presidents here in New York. President Biden holding a $25 million fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall with some pretty high-profile support from former presidents. Former President Obama hitching a ride to New York on Air Force One with President Biden. Former President Clinton also attending. The first pictures here of the three Democratic presidents behind the scenes. Former President Trump, though, also nearby at the wake of an NYPD officer killed in the line of duty. Trump's men and criminal trial starting in less than three weeks. ABC's chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce in New York as well. Tonight, President Biden calling in the heavy hitters to give his campaign a jolt. Biden and former President Barack Obama touching down today in New York City, teaming up tonight with former President Bill Clinton for what the campaign is touting as a record-shattering fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall. The Biden campaign billing the star-studded night as a massive show of force, a conversation with three presidents and musical guests, including Lizzo and Queen Latifah. The event expected to rake in an historic $25 million, more money than rival Donald Trump raised all last month. Tickets for the sold-out fundraiser run from $225 to half a million dollars. Select high-dollar donors can get their photo taken with all three presidents by famed photographer Annie Leibovitz. Outside the event in New York, pro-Palestinian protesters demanding a ceasefire. Biden and Trump are running neck and neck in national polls, with the race now tightening in key battleground states. Trump today making his own visit to New York, invited by the family to the wake of slain NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, a young father gunned down during a routine traffic stop. It comes as Trump is eager to put crime front and center in this election. We have to stop. We have to get back to law and order. We have to do a lot of things differently because this is not working. This is happening too often. 
Mary Bruce here in New York City tonight. Mary, thank you. Meantime, Donald Trump is seeking to dismiss Georgia's election interference case against him. His lawyers in the Fulton County courtroom arguing that the former president's comments questioning the results of the 2020 election were, quote, the height of political speech protected by the First Amendment. The judge has yet to make any rulings. Now to the chilling new details of that stabbing spree in Rockford, Illinois, the rampage lasting just 20 minutes, leaving four people dead, including a 15-year-old girl. Her mother says she died protecting her sister and a friend. And tonight, we are learning what investigators say led up to it. Here's ABC's Alex Perez. Tonight, a close-knit community in northwest Illinois, Rockford, in mourning after police say 22-year-old Christian Soto went on a deadly 20-minute knife rampage, killing four people, including a friend, a friend's mother, and injuring seven others. It was learned that Soto had broken into multiple homes nearby in Rockford, and in doing so, had beat a young woman to death with a bat, stabbed two adults to death, and ran over a mailman who died from his injuries. Investigators tonight revealing those chilling new details, saying Soto told them he was doing drugs with his 23-year-old friend Jacob Shuffback and that those drugs were allegedly laced with something. The violence beginning at about 1.15 p.m. Wednesday. Soto allegedly grabbing a knife and then, police say, killing his friend and his friend's mother, Ramona Shuffback. Soto then, authorities say, taking the horror to other parts of the neighborhood allegedly killing mail carrier Jay Larson and breaking into another home where police say he attacked a group of teenage girls watching a movie, killing 15-year-old Jenna Newcomb. Her mother says she died protecting her sister and friend. Then you think about these four. They were doing what we all do, what you should all be doing. It's spring break. You have three girls watching a movie? I can't even comprehend that. Tonight, this emotional community remembering those who were killed. The worst of times can bring out the best in us. And Alex joins me now. Alex, what kind of charges is the suspect facing? Yeah, Phil Soto remains in custody. He's facing 13 charges, including first-degree murder, attempted murder, and home invasion. Phil? All right, Alex Perez tonight. Alex, thank you. The Biden administration has approved proposals to extend the list of race and ethnicity options on the next U.S. Census and other federal surveys. Checkboxes for the Middle East and North African and Hispanic or Latino ethnicities will appear under a reformatted question that asks, what is your race and or ethnicity? Supporters say the changes could help enforce civil rights protections and guide policymaking. There is still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, our conversation with viral ballet dancer Anthony Madu. But next, the UN's urgent warning over what it calls the cataclysmic crisis in Haiti. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Can you believe it? It's 25 years of breakfast in bed, surprising moms across America. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! And for our 25th anniversary, we're making it the biggest surprise yet. A full-on breakfast in bed extravaganza like you have never seen before. So go to goodmorningamerica.com or scan this QR code to find out how to enter a deserving mom you love for breakfast in bed. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation.
station. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not a pair, ain't it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. I'm Aaron Katursky at the Trump Building on Wall Street. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. We are tracking several headlines around the world right now. At least 45 people are dead, one seriously hurt following this bus crash in South Africa, according to the country's Department of Transportation. Officials say the driver lost control and collided with barriers on a bridge, causing the bus to go over that bridge and catch fire. The bus was transporting people from the country of Botswana to a town in South Africa. A new UN report states immediate and bold action is required to tackle the situation in Haiti, calling it cataclysmic. From the beginning of the year to March 22nd, at least 1,500 people were killed and more than 800 injured in the gang violence. And sexual violence is being used to punish and control people, the report says. The report also says 1.6 million people in Haiti are facing emergency levels of food insecurity. Britain's Queen Camilla arrived at Worcester Cathedral for a special service and was met by anti-monarchy protesters. They held up yellow flags that read abolish the monarchy. Camilla stepped in for the king at that service as he undergoes cancer treatment. Barefoot in the rain on the streets of Lagos, an 11-year-old Nigerian boy spins in pirouettes. The boy, Anthony Madu, would soon become a viral ballet star. Anthony drew eyes from Hollywood and won hearts universally after his ballet teacher posted this 44-second video to social media. Now, his story is the subject of a new documentary, Madu, following Anthony as he leaves his family in Nigeria to study with a scholarship at the Elmhurst Ballet School, one of the most prestigious in England and in the world. I spoke with Anthony about his journey. It was difficult at times. I was five years old when I discovered ballet. People think that it's not for boys. It's my dream and I have to follow it. Take me back to the earliest memory you have of falling in love with dancing. I love moving and dancing. It wasn't really specifically ballet, but I just knew that I loved it when you listen to the music and try to connect with it and also connect to the moment that you are in right now. And it just, it just feels amazing. You talk in the documentary about being bullied because of it. How difficult was it to be that age and to want to dance in Nigeria? It was quite hard because I just started ballet and I had like a lot of people saying to me that I shouldn't do ballet and all that sort of thing. But then my, I also kind of like really questioned if I should still do, if I should still dance and stuff, but I just kind of like kept going. And then there's this video that, that is taken of you and, and put on the internet and goes viral. Um, yeah. When you were filming that, did you think, it could be a viral video. Um, so I definitely did not think that it, the video could have gone viral because to me, it was just my, like, it, it was just our normal weekly post on Instagram and stuff. And after, when it went viral and the next day I came in, it was like really surprising because my dance teacher told me that the, like the video we made yesterday went viral and I was like, really surprised because I, you, I wasn't really expecting it to be a big thing and stuff and yeah I think it was really amazing. Hi Mrs Madu, we wanted to talk to you about Anthony your son. He had so much raw talent that we are, are interested in at the school. You must be very proud. I'm very proud of him. You become a student at this very prestigious school the Stan School Elmhurst in in, um, in England. What was it like going from your home to this school? I was nervous at first and also excited at the same time because it has been something that I wanted to go to do, like to go to like a proper ballet school. And I'm like, I finally managed to do that. And I just decided to like get on with it and stop thinking about the difficulties that might come with it and just, yeah. 
on your centre, boys. Shouldn't be any mistakes. If you think this is hard, wait until the summer show. It was really the first time you were leaving home, and it wasn't to go to a- another city. <laughs> it was to go to another country and live with other kids your age. Um, I'm wondering, was the fact that you were going to dance, was that comforting? I think the fact that like other people here did, it did make it a lot easier because there was really nothing that different. We all like dancing and we're all doing it. So like, it didn't seem as bad. It didn't feel as hard as it would normally be, yeah. And speaking of your future, you've received a scholarship to train in the United States. Um, yes. What's what's next for you? I know that I want to get better at dancing and education in life and stuff, but I don't have an ultimate goal, goal for like the next 10 years. I just kind of like want to focus on now and the present and stuff. He is an amazing young man. And still to come, our weekly segment, TikTok, with an engineer whose American dream shuttled her to a different world. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Interrogations are a slow burn. You ready to tell me what happened? Question after question, hour after hour. You can see the click, 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 click. So many people that step into the box, they think they're going to talk their way out of it. But they're walking him down the path of confession. When he finally broke, it was surreal. Oh, my God. Interrogation Tapes premieres Monday on ABC. Monday afternoon, April 8th. I'm looking up. All eyes now to the sky. For a total solar eclipse, a breathtaking celestial event. ABC News, together with National Geographic, with ABC's David Moore and Lindsay Davis reporting. Watch it all on ABC News Live, National Geographic Channel, Nat Geo Wild, Disney Plus, Hulu, and live on ABC. Eclipse Across America. Monday afternoon, April 8th, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not a care, ain't it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Welcome back. We turn now to our weekly segment, TikTok, where we take a closer look at the story behind the sensation. Our next guest showed the world that not even the sky is the limit, making history as the first Mexican-born woman to journey into space and fulfilling her childhood dream of reaching the cosmos. Handpicked from a pool of 7,000 applicants, Katya Echezareta, one of six seats aboard Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin rocket. Take a look. Thanks for humanity. Katya, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. I guess just first off, because so many people would like to know what it's like, what was it like? Thank you so much. First of all, thank you so much for having me. And truly this experience, I really wish I could put it into words. I wish I could explain it in such a way that people would be able to understand the full magnitude and extent of it. But really just to sum it up, it is the most incredible and beautiful experience a human being can have. I can only imagine there are so many people who would love to have that experience and you really can never truly understand it until you're there in some situations. So I get what you're saying. Um, From your early days in Guadalajara, Mexico, to your work with NASA and pursuit of a master's degree in electrical engineering, when did your passion for reaching the stars first take flight? When did you set your sight on doing that? Well, I really love that question. 
because for me, I made my official final decision at just seven years old. That is the age when I just decided and I started telling my parents, started telling everyone. And from that moment on, my mind did not change. And that's amazing. And and there you were. <laughs> you also lead the Katya Echezareta Space Foundation, known for its educational initiatives like the Air and Space Camp. Talk to us a little bit about your mission, your second year of camps in Mexico. Yes, yeah, so all of this started after I come back from my experience in space. This, for me, this experience is something that I thought was going to take me the rest of my life. And so when you're 26 years old and the mission you have for the rest of your life, you've already achieved it, what's next? And I actually had an amazing conversation with the vice president and she said to me, you know, I really relate to what you are going through and what you will go through because for people like us, who are the first to do something, the job is not to be the first. The pride and the honor is not in being the first, but in making sure you're not the last. So that's why we decided to create these camps and these training educational programs for people of my own community. Well, you're not just an electrical engineer and a citizen astronaut. You've graced the covers of Cosmopolitan, Marie Claire, Vogue in Mexico. Plus, you were Glamour's Woman of the Year, and you even have your own Barbie. There it is. Yes. That's amazing. Um, how do you how do you use this diverse career that you've had so far in your life to sort of challenge stereotypes? I think that last portion of what you just mentioned is so important and is so valuable to our entire mission. Part of breaking down those stereotypes has also been breaking them down within myself first. Back home, you were told this dream of yours would never come true. And I know for so many people that can be one of the best motivators. Um, as we conclude Women's History Month, what message do you have for young girls out there beyond those aspiring to join STEM fields? I think the biggest message is just no one is gonna hand you opportunities out of the blue. If you want something and that thing that you want is very large and sometimes larger than life itself, then you are going to be the one that has to go out there and believe in yourself first. But I really just want to encourage all women to think that way, that maybe the, that one dream that you have that for you is just the biggest thing you can come up with. Maybe that's not the biggest thing you will achieve <laughs> if you truly commit and really believe in, in what you can do. I love that. That's beautiful advice. And I, I love that you can say beyond the space flight. There are very few people in the world <laughs> who can say what I've achieved beyond the space flight. Katya, what a pleasure to meet you. You're a remarkable young woman. I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Thank you so much. And for more out of this world content, check out Katya at Cat Voltage. That's our show for tonight. I'm Phil Lipoff. ABC News Live is here for you all night with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on Hulu, Roku, Pluto TV, and the ABC News app, of course, abcnews.com. Have a good night. This is ABC News Live. The crush of the family.